So, so this is what I did today. I unhooked my PC and I, I like cleaned so it. So you did do something. I did. I so. So you did do something. Yes, so yes, she yes. said she didn't touch it, but obviously touched it. Listen. I gave her thirty minutes before we got on live, and we're still. Are we done? Did you, did you fix it? Yeah, I fixed it. We're good. So is TikTok up now? Yeah, TikTok's up. It's good. Okay. All right. Let's. So, Let's get cracking. Okay, so this, but hold on, let me explain what happened. So I took my. This is why, like, women, like. I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I was gonna tell I, you. Yeah, I, I, I already know. I, I already know. Okay, oh, so. Um, that's what happens when you got a man in the house. Fucking uh, do shit right over there. That's you, what happens. Ain't that right, ladies? You, you are such an ass. I cannot oh. believe you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, why y'all, you, you can't say you don't need a man, right? A man would have took the computer apart, put it back together, and it would have worked just like it was when he took it when he took it apart. So here's yeah. what happened. I took my PC apart so I could dust it and clean it and everything, and I had to unplug everything. Everything is good on my end. However, for some reason in TikTok Studio, it like made my headphones, my mic and you're you, yes okay so it's fixed now it's fixed i figured it out <laughs> i i'm so done with this guy i'm so done with him i cannot i cannot <laughs> anyways let's get right into it are you ready well i mean we done, i don't lost everybody in the in the chat they don't we're down to 30 now oh my god they're coming in <laughs> lessons learned okay so anyways you got, did you get any DMs from anybody at all? Because I did. Uh, yeah, I did. I actually I actually got a really long one, but I didn't get a chance to read it. But you go ahead and go first. Okay. So I got like three. I got three that I thought would be really good. And mm -hmm. um, and then I screenshotted a few of like things that were in chat that I thought would be good conversation points to talk about. So let me go ahead and go here. I'm not going to look at it. Yeah, okay. we're just gonna go off yours because he sent me a really long one, and I don't want to read something. I want to, I want to proof it before I read it. Okay. Um. What is that? That's you. I was lowering it down. I'm going into the question. Relax. You're ridiculous today. Nine oh nine, guys. You are ridiculous today. Oh, I cannot with you. Okay. So here's the question. So I got a serious question. I'd like to know an answer if possible. It doesn't have to be anonymous. So this person's name is Austin. I'm not sure if I can articulate the question accurately, but I'll try my best. So here's the question. Is it when it's when two people are in a serious relationship or married that some women will make it seem like everything is fine? I.e. make future plans or dreams together. Then out of the blue, wants to leave or get a divorce. I had this happen in both of my marriages and was blindsided by both of them. It really bothered me. And because of it, I don't think I can trust another woman again. So do we really think it was blindsiding? I would, that was my first question. Mm -hmm. When I, when I got that question, I thought, how could you be blindsided twice? Like, were there mm -hmm. issues in the marriage? Had they communicated with you that they were missing something? Um, so that was kind of a red flag to me. <sighs> So you want me to go? Yeah, you go. So the the, the first and foremost thing is, uh, and again, I don't know Austin, and I, we, we, when we say, when we answer these or when we discuss them, man, we discuss them from a completely neutral perspective, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm not judging you or your situation, but uh, during any of this time, did you look at what you are doing or are not doing in your relationship? So there's not very many times that women – you know, women like consistency. They like uh, a stable thing. And if they've got something good going on in the house, they're not going to up and go for no reason. Out yeah, of nowhere. Some, yeah, some women are always looking over the fence. The grass is greener on the other side. But we're talking about a small percentage of women. For you to fall into that, it, to find both of those women two times in a row, very highly unlikely. So you got to start looking at yourself, man. What are you doing or not doing in the relationship that caused her to change how she felt in the relationship with you. So, you know, that's a big, that's a big gap right there. So, I mean, he's not here to answer that. So how do you move forward from there? Yeah. Um, so I did tell him that I would send him this clip too. Also mm -hmm. my, when I had read that question, like I said, the first thing that, um, that was a red flag to me was blindsided on both accounts. Mm -hmm. So, 
I do believe that there's a point in your relationship where you can convince yourself that everything is okay when you know that it's not. Like, you know that mm -hmm. you have issues, communication, sexual, whatever it will be. So I would say for my advice for this person is to really self-reflect on if you're lying to yourself and mm -hmm. making yourself believe that the relationship is better than what it is. Yeah, and he, he could be lying he could be unaware and you know like men get super focused right and we're not mind readers so you're gonna hear a lot of men say that in relationships some of you guys have men saying that to you right now we're not fucking mind readers so if yeah. you guys don't tell us something's wrong if you're just like passively aggressively saying stuff under your breath or going around about things like we like information straight ahead so it probably did just like this on him right mm -hmm. or Right. Or she's being so subliminal that she's not outwardly or directly communicating the problem. So she's just sitting there. Right. So he has no idea in his mind. He thinks everything's hunky dory. blinders. Yeah. Blinders. Right. So we get so laser focused. If you guys don't complain, which you guys do a lot, then we don't suspect anything's wrong. Am I lying? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. We complain. Uh, we complain. Uh, how about this? How about, here's a better question. Here's a better question. Who complains more? Men or women, be honest. I sometimes wish men complained more so that we would know no, no, what the, the issue is. That's not the question. Ah. That's not the question. The question was, who complains more, men or women? Women. Okay. So why why did I get an eye roll? Do y'all see that, guys? Do you see that? This is what happens to men on a daily basis. Do you know why I rolled my eyes? We say because you don't like the truth no. that that would be the no. first thing <laughs> yeah, no that, that's a true statement and you don't like it so like we get that a lot men get that all the time in relationships am i wrong guys so let me Boyfriend, tell you girlfriend married let me tell you what you you just contradicted yourself because no, you, yes you did because mm. you just said that w mm. you men are not mind readers and for us to tell you so women tell you but you're looking at it like this you're no, looking no, no, at no, it no. with blinders. There, no, no, no. There's a difference between communicating and complaining. What's the difference? Huge. Are you kidding no, me? No, I know. Uh, relax. I know. <laughs> I'm telling you to say it for chat, okay? I'm not about, <laughs> no. I'm not about to I'm get just... freaking death threats again because I played so, the, huh? So, so, <laughs> what no, is it? No, but that's good, though. No, you need to. That gets the reactions, too. Yeah, but no, uh -huh. this is a real problem. This is a real problem. Men get home from a long day of work competing with other alphas in their workspace, dealing with a bunch of stress. We're already stressed the fuck out, barely okay. making enough money to make ends meet. We got to come home, act like none of that shit just had took place. And then we get home to complaining. You get what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? The nagging, the uh, like, what about this? We already got an attitude. Communicating without an attitude is communicating. Communicating with an attitude is complaining. Does that make sense? I have a rebuttal. Okay. Okay. So you just said that men are working, contributing, dealing with all life stresses, and they come home and they're dealing with nagging and stuff like that. No, so, I'm not saying all the time, but you're. But that's what you're. You were generalizing, correct? This is what I'm talking about. This situation. Right? Would you say that? It would be smart for husbands, boyfriends or whatever to give their spouses a safe space to be like, honey, I had a really bad day, but I want to hear about your day. What what do you like? What do you got going on? Is there anything that you need to communicate with me? Do you think that maybe if the husband made it a safe place? for their spouse to be able to come communicate with them that they wouldn't feel like they needed to nag? No? Most, okay, just most, wanted to make most, sure. Most guys in this chat are non-combative, meaning we, when we come home, we're not, we're not interested. We don't want to argue with you. We're not asking for the attitude. We can come home, deal with everybody's bullshit, come into the house and still not have an attitude towards you or towards our kids. But you know who struggles with having an attitude and like projecting that onto the man? Am I being am I being true for do you think I'm full of shit? I I partially think you're full of shit because you're right. You're 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 right. <laughs> you're right. Men <laughs> your men might not come in with a bad attitude, but it's because they're 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 one drinking or no. or yes, or or no. they come home to a clean house because it's already been taken no. care of. So here's my so like let's let's say you had a bad day. Mm-hmm. Why, why make it worse? Because you're in a bad mood or because it's, you know, the, the no-fly zone. 
Do you know what I'm saying? The no-fly zone time of the month. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I get you get what I'm saying. So like, when, yes. Why make it worse? Because we're not interested in that. We don't want to fight. We don't want to argue. We don't want to deal with attitude. We don't. We don't give you guys attitude. We just come home, and then all of a sudden we have a lot of times attitude waiting for us. So now. Yes. Okay. So why do that? Why do women do that? Why, why are we doing that? Why can't we just communicate instead of complain? Uh, I mean, I can want me to answer it from experience or do you want me to answer for women in general? Whatever, whatever is the answer for you. I would say women probably do that because they feel like their issues are not taken seriously, that they feel like their problems are probably looked at as not that important. So whether the, the wife is home with kids all day, a stay at home mom, dealing with all of that and then making sure the house is clean, making sure food is food is prepared, all of that. And then wants to come home and and have their husband be excited to see them also. What's the one thing we talked about on the last stream that men want to come home to smiles on on their wives or significant others face as soon as they walk through the mm. door. Women want that too. They want to no. know that the husband's happy to come home we and see it. them and We do it every time. Hey honey, I'm home. Kids. They do? Hey daddy. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not saying all, right? Okay. Nothing's always, nothing's never, but like what you just said we're not we're not coming home to smiles we're coming home to attitude complaining misery loves company who likes that more men or women be honest oh no i would say women statistically okay. it's women so yes yeah, statistically it's women women are more emotional so it just tells you right there like men are low key for the most part like we're not looking for confrontation we just dealt with all this shit but we can come home without bringing the baggage home with us who who struggles with that more men or women bringing the baggage home with them the stress i would say both do absolutely I don't yes know about that. i hit on the fact that uh, uh, you know men drink uh, there's you know statistically men are more alcoholics than women are because they are Oh, that's true. that's how they deal with their stresses of the day so okay. they may not be projecting it verbally but they're drinking or Fair using point. some type of substance when i drink when i drink i'm the most loving fun guy there is so yeah every time some people so yeah I, I i have not i'm gonna be honest with you i've i've drank with a lot of guys we go out we go out i've done the college thing i have not out of all my friends i haven't I can't recall a mean drunk and I know they're out there. So like there I would are. say, yeah, I would say like most of the people that I know that drink are even more chill, just like getting high. They're fucking just mellow now. Like they're just like, okay, cool. I'm here to have a good time. I forgot about my stresses. So we're talking about this release being a negative thing in the friends that I have. It's, it's a Jenna loves it. When I drink, she, she's like, I wish you would drink more. Because I'm like really lovey on her. I'm really affectionate. But, yeah. You know, it's like, I see that a lot in my friends. I don't see a bunch of like, you know, argumentative, want to fight people type drunks. So like, I can't really relate to that. But in, in my eyes, it's a good thing. They're using this to get away from the stress, not let that be the focus of them projecting onto their wife or their kids. I, yeah. I don't see that as a bad thing. Now, anything in abundance can be a problem, right? But we're not, I'm not talking about like, you know, yeah. <laughs> smash face or anything like that. Well, I would say to you, I'm very happy that you have friends that deal with, handle their alcohol like that. I mm -hmm. can tell you statistically, they do not. Um, I, for instance, have dealt with Personally, a lot of women who were going through either support groups or trying to deal with their husbands who were alcoholics and mm -hmm. either abusive, either it was physically or mentally because they couldn't handle their liquor. I would say mm -hmm. more often times than not, men and See, I mean, women cannot handle their liquor because they're overindulging, trying to push down the stresses of, I don't make enough money, I need to provide for my family. And I think that is mo most men are heavy drinkers and they most men see i don't agree with that i know statistically I, alcoholics so are me, more men than they are women yeah I, yes they are but you you said it again you said most men are that way i'm like no most men are not obliterated drunk oh i see i see how you interpreted that They're no no not. no that's not what i meant what okay. I, that's not what i meant <laughs> i would i'm what i'm saying is that i'm happy that you've experienced that but i would say that mm -hmm. there are plenty of women who deal with their husbands who come home and and drink and, and yeah, yeah. i would say like 
even for me, when when somebody has to come home and have an alcoholic beverage, in my mind, it automatically makes me think that you can't deal with life, that you can't just live, you can't just be, that you have to have some kind of substance to take the edge off. Uh, where to me, that's an automatic like, everything okay? Is something going on underlying? I. So, so what's the better option? What's the better option? Like uh, a guy drinks a couple drinks and we're not talking about smash face, right? We're, yeah. He drinks a couple of drinks to just like kind of let loose or, you know, let his hair down, if you will. Right. But you guys choose what? Lash out? Um, attack? I wouldn't say lash out or attack, but I would say oh. that a lot of women suffer in silence. A lot of women suffer with what they're going through and then they get depressed and sad and it's just an it's just a spiral. Absolutely. I wish. I wish. So I wish, but that's not what I've dealt with. I've I've always dealt with the misery loves company, and that's been the majority of the women that I've dated, been with, whatever. And that's fine. I get it. That's just how women are. So like we have had to learn how to adapt. There goes that old saying, right? Happy life, ha happy wife, happy life. And yeah. then I hear I hear all these fucking old farts joking all the time about, man. I don't. Make sure you learn how to apologize for no reason. I don't believe in that. The whole reason why there's that stereotype, you need to apologize for no reason. You need to just say, yes, dear. No, you need to admit to being wrong even when you're not wrong because you guys generationally complain and make huss and fusses about all these things. And then men always stand in the logical arena and have to just like succumb to whatever emotions you guys are going through why do you think that's a, like that's literally a saying that we learn to have to like to either adopt to have successful marriage that's just weak i don't believe in that so at all. your fight is that you think that women should be more logically based and emotional would you say that that's what you're what you're coming down to there's nothing wrong with you being in a bad mood I completely understand that. But when it comes to the people in your life that care about you, why are we why are we complaining about it causing more stress like in a place that's supposed to be like harm harmonic, I guess, mm -hmm. like stress free? I'm here to support you. So you want a safe place to talk to me? Don't talk at me like I would. You know why? You know why a lot of guys can't stand talking to their wife? Why is because that it's not really talking. They're it's, talking we, at you. Do this, do that, sit, that. Yeah. Okay. That's where that's where those stereotypes come from. Like, just sit there and nod your head. Like, I hear that joke. And like, no, no, I'm not fucking doing that. And then I hear like the faith-based stuff. Well, the Bible says that you've got to be the man in the house. You have to show the more most patience. Why? Why why can't we show the same patience? Why can't we respect each other the same? I, why yeah, do yeah, I, I have understand to do your logic more? on that? I understand. So like that's that's kind of what I'm saying. This is why men, I'm not saying all, but like this is why they don't want to fucking listen. They don't want to talk. Like they don't they they don't like the way that the conversation goes most of the time. I'll give you an example. So wait, let me give you I, an example first. Yeah, go I'm going to give go you ahead. an example first. So everything that you just said, I, I won. I completely agree with you. I understand a hundred percent where you're coming from in that sense. Let me just take you down a walk as a woman. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. just say I'm, I'm newly married and I have a baby. Okay. So now I'm dealing with taking care of this new human and only one that's not counting people who have multiple children and my husband. So not only do I have to be sexy, not only do I have to, you know, screw my husband, not only do I have to take care of a new baby, not only do I have to take care of myself, um, if I work now, then I have to work. I have to do all of these things that I'm taking, that I've taken responsibility for, and I have to be good at it. I have mm -hmm. to be good at it because not only am I worried that I'm going to fail as a, as a wife, I'm worried that I'm going to fail as a mother, and I'm worried that I'm going to fail as an employee. And there's so many eyes on you to fail. And a lot of those eyes are women. A lot of those eyes are women. Not, mm -hmm. I'm not saying men. I'm talking about other moms. I'm talking about um, your mom, your family, all of that. So you have this unrelenting weight on you to be successful at this thing that you have no experience at whatsoever. And as a woman, we're told you're the backbone. You can t you you can take it. You can handle these things because it is your job. It is your job to make sure that your family is taken care of. And so you you do these things. You do these things and you want to do it with a smile on your face. And women just take it and take it and take it. 
And then there's just a point where you're like, can I eat a fucking hot meal for once? Because you're so busy feeding everybody else. You're so busy cooking and cleaning up the kitchen, making sure everybody's tucked in. You just blew your husband. And now you have five minutes to yourself. That's what goes on in a woman. And that's why we explode. Can I get a round of applause, please? The blow job only took two minutes of your life, okay? I'm, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> the way I do it, yes. <laughs> oh my God, bro. I guess I deserve that one. I walked right into that one. So, okay. Yeah. No, I, 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 agree, I actually agree with you, Trish. Mm -hmm. So when you have a household that is completely unbalanced, right? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Where you're, 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 you're hauling most of the weight. I completely understand that. I come from a household where it's 50-50. I do the chores, mm -hmm. I take care of the kids, I do my own, I pay my own bills, they pay theirs, uh, we come equally to take care of our child, uh, putting the bed, getting him up, changing his diapers, feeding him, all that stuff. Now, because of like schedules, I, I might be the one that feeds him dinner the most, but on the days that she can, she will feed him dinner. So mm -hmm. in a household where it's 50, right? Or you could say 100% on both sides. Yeah which I'm lucky for that right now, okay? But then I'm not gonna tolerate those things. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Now, yeah. if, if I'm in a situation where I, I'm not doing the legwork, okay? So I'm not taking care of the kid, I'm not cleaning the house and doing all that stuff. So if there is an imbalance there, I'm gonna tolerate a little bit more. I will, because who mm -hmm. am I to say this, that, and the other, and I'm not pulling my end of the bargain. So that goes for all relationships in here. Someone's going to be unhappy in an unbalanced relationship, i.e. you. So, so, so my question is this. So you, you did all the, you did all the kid stuff. You did all the home stuff. What was his job? So obviously you guys have traditional roles. Did he, did he, did he pay the bills? Nope. With his job? No. Then, yeah, so that was fucked then. I feel so, bad for you. I feel bad for you. That was fucked. So now, in my opinion, if he's paying the bills, he's working, he's paying the bills, you're at home, you're taking care of this, this, and this, that's his job. This is your job. So let me tell you what a day in my life was, okay? Yeah. So this is how my, and, and the question in the chat was, um, we had somebody say, but what, um, they said, so what about a woman um, that works and still has to put in, at, uh, put in work at home. So that was very much me. So this is what my life was. Okay. Not only did I have to take my son either to daycare or school, I had to rush to work. I had to work mm -hmm. an eight hour shift. God forbid the kid have, um, a school function or an appointment because that was also me. I had to take mm -hmm. care of that. Then I had to go home and on times that there was no school functions whatsoever, my ex-husband got off of work at 3 p.m. I didn't get off till five. My ex-husband went home and took a nap every single day. So my question to you would be why? Honestly, because he, I just didn't want to deal with it. I just let him do it because I didn't want to fight. And so okay. I, I didn't want to fight because I knew if I, in our household, it was very combative to where if I said, hey, can you pick up the kid today? He would say, I'm really, I'm really tired. I just want to take a nap. So and to just yeah, avoid I mean, that, I would just, I would just pick up the kid. And then, and then, so he's already been home for three hours. Cause I don't get home till mm -hmm. six. What's for dinner? He's been home mm -hmm. for three hours. Yeah. What's for dinner? And then I'm hey. cooking and then I'm cleaning yeah. and then I'm bathing and I'm putting the kid down and all of that. Mm -hmm. So that was very much how my life was. So yeah. I can look back at my life and completely understand like why I had so much resentment. Again, not putting all the responsibility on him. There was it was a two way street, but I would let it like just bury me to the point to where I would just lash out and I'd just be like, like, what are like, yeah, you provide for like you like you make more money than me, but I'm making money, too. Like I'm contributing yeah. too, and okay. our household. Everything was together. It wasn't separate. Right. But I see your situation is not what I'm referring to. Yes. I'm referring to. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually side with you. I side with you. But it didn't end up working out for that reason right there that we've been talking about in here the whole time about how relationships fail and the main thing was communication i.e you and him not mm -hmm. creating a safe space for you to be able to communicate that stuff so uh but again you also replied with when when it came time to communicate you felt like lashing yeah 
You get what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah. again, you got this, you got this merry-go-round of yep. problem, headbutting problem right there. So now he doesn't want to listen to that because now it feels like you're complaining, but you had good reason to. Okay, I'm siding with you here. Like there yeah. should have been a complete better balance, but that wasn't communicated by you. He didn't give you a safe space to communicate that. So it led to divorce. So I completely fucking understand that. I completely yeah. get it. So and, and I'm with you on that. I would say too, like you said that you, uh, it, it is a lot in how you're raised. And so we're like, it is. where you were raised, I feel like you were raised by a family and a lot of your friends, I would say were probably the same way just because of where you're from and stuff like that, that they were raised in a way that men have a little bit more integrity. I, I would say a little more patience, a little more understanding and I think you guys just love differently, honestly, because everything that I've heard in stories of how you've described your wife, how your friends have described their wife or their relationships, I've never experienced that in any relationship that I've seen in the side of the country that I live in at you all. Gotta move, you know what they say about the South, right? Southern hospitality. We don't have that here. <laughs> it's a little bit different. It's a, but it's a little bit, but you still have assholes here. There's still bad men here. So like, but, but, but it is a different mindset. It's the Bible belt. It's religion, Baptist, Southern and all that stuff. So like it kind of bleeds into stuff, but like you'll have, you'll have full on towns in the South that are Christian based, which you don't have that in the West. Yeah. I'm talking about towns, like uh, t cities of 25,000 completely Christian based, which that's just not very common in the Midwest and the West. So it is I, not. I've been all over. Yeah. So like you just don't see this stuff. So is that why I am the way I am? No, I mean, I'm not perfect. Um, my mother was uh, Korean, Asian, so they take a lot of pride in family. And she was very old school, man. It's like it's funny. It's actually funny that I, I believe in shared responsibilities because my mom did everything. My dad didn't do shit. And they both split, they split the bills, but my mom fucking worked her fucking ass off, can't speak English, took care of me, fed me all the fucking time, took care of all my friends, was constantly cooking. She'd make breakfast, feed me, and then she'd start on lunch. Like that's wow. how much I was eating. And then she would just constantly be doing that stuff, doing my laundry. Like she was an amazing woman and she never fucking once complained. I never heard her once complain. And mm. it just, so like for me, I see her doing this shit. It's like, I just, I hate misery loves company. I don't want to hear no one fucking complain. Yeah. I have nothing to complain about. I could be living in bumfuck Egypt, have a fucking, I only got two nickels to rub together. I could be out on the fucking streets and I'm not. So me, I'm completely grateful. I've got, even if I have the worst fucking day, I got nothing to complain about when I come into this house. So when I see people, especially ones that I love around me complaining, that shit grinds me the fuck up, man, because I've seen so many people failing constantly and have way more struggles, way more to complain about. And it just like, it just makes me lose respect for people. It really yeah, does. I'm, I can, I can understand that. And honestly, the way that you just described um, your relationship with your mother it brought tears to my eyes because like I think every single mother in this chat would hope that their son would praise them like that so it just mm -hmm. it's just a testament to you know what a wonderful woman she was so thank you don't, don't start this <laughs> shit god damn it motherfucker man don't fucking start <laughs> don't fucking do it <laughs> don't fucking start this shit man no it just it is such a a good testament <laughs> to how good of a woman she was and so like i'm i'm serious like every time you talk about her you could just hear the love um mm -hmm. the way you describe her so thank you yeah, yeah. like i really do appreciate you sharing that with us because i so hope that i have the that impression on my son i hope that mm -hmm. when he talks about me that's how he talks to, about me and i'm sure that there's a mm -hmm. ton of women that feel that way too i'm sure he will yeah i'm sure he does i'm and sorry <laughs> And it's like, you know, and, it, and it's surprising that I don't, I actually don't adopt the whole, the roles, the old school role, because that's how my family was. And I, and I never saw my dad do anything. I never saw him do anything besides go to work. He never really took any care of like me or my sister or anything like that. My mom fucking did everything. And yeah. even then she never even complained about him. Never. And he gave her nothing. It's just, it's just weird. But Do you like, know why? Even you know why? 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 You were the love of her life. Could be.
you were the love of her life could be and that's why could she be. did all of that for you because yeah. she lived for you yeah i mean i i agree i i actually agree with that like she yeah. she absolutely lived through me and my accomplishments and was so proud of everything and um she, you know it's just it's it's just weird that i've adopted but like having that logical background of like how she would like deduce and problem solve and and just figure shit out it just it transferred to me that like everybody's got to pull their weight don't fucking complain about nothing because somebody's got it worse than you there's just no reason to complain every time that you wake up in the morning you take a breath you should be fucking thankful that you got something to look at or someone to hug because there's someone out there ain't got a fucking there's kids out there ain't got a fucking mom or dad man like yeah that shit's fucking crazy to me. So just be grateful for your situation. And and, that, and I just believe in fairness. So like any relationship that I'm in or that I've tried to be in, and I learned a lot. I didn't do it right my whole life, obviously, because I was young and stupid. But um, I just believe in I got to put forth my best foot, my best effort. I got to pull my weight. And then she does, too. If she chooses to take on a traditional role, then I will take on a traditional role too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do whatever you do for whatever you do as well. Does that yeah. make sense? I'm You're gonna, gonna mirror equal. the energy. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna equal you. But if you don't do, I refuse to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, I would say I probably operate in that sense now too. I think before, and this is something that I've been working out of as I've been dealing like with my healing process, is mm -hmm. I thought that if I loved harder, it would make somebody love me harder or mm -hmm. it would make somebody love me more. And in the healing process, I've learned, no, you cannot, you cannot make anybody love you. Yeah, and, you and you cannot mm -hmm. make anybody love you the way that you want to be loved. They mm -hmm. either do or they don't. And, mm -hmm. and, um, just stop doing that. Like, stop. I mean, obviously if you're married, like, and you grow up together, things change, especially if you're married for five, 10, 15 years, you, you, you change as a person. And that's why communication is such key in those relationships, because you want to be able to communicate with your spouse. Hey, I'm missing something here. I need something mm -hmm. here. And if you have that open communication with them, that open dialect, it makes it easier to, to get what you need from that spouse. But if you already have broke down communication, I mean, it's just, you're not going to get what you want out of those. Always nurture the communication in your relationships, whether it's your friendships or your relationships. That is such, it is so key. And it's just tough to like, how do you, how do you talk about how, how to have those logical conversations without emotion getting involved? Like, it's hard though. Like, so th like, that's why, like, I try to do a balance of like understanding where she's coming from. I know, okay, she's might not be mad at me, but it feels like she is. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's hard. It's hard because I see like, I see like, uh, like their brother or their sister. I'm not talking about the one I'm with, but like, just like, I see like other people's relationships or like maybe one of my friends and like, uh, either the man's talking condescendingly to the, to the wife in front of the friends mm -hmm. or vice vice versa like and i'm gonna be honest i see it more the other way i see like I, i'm being i swear to god the women I'm doing it biased. to the men yes no i see it that was one of I my husband's ex-husband's biggest complaints about me that was his biggest complaints about me we would be around it, friends yeah. and i'd be like i'd be like why yeah. are you wearing that shirt and he would yeah. go why are you talking about me like that i'm like oh my god i yeah. was just having it's a conversation and he would say that he's like you're embarrassing me and it didn't take yeah. me it took me time mm. to realize like oh god like i was talking bad about him yeah. you know you remember what you said about like all these little things start chipping away mm -hmm. those things every time you guys do that to a man it like fucking chips away and the only thing that we do better than you guys at is we hold it in better we don't say nothing we don't yeah. fucking complain about it as much but it's gonna come out in some other form whether it's infidelity yeah. or something worse than that i guess infidelity would be the worst thing but we're, and we're it, not it condoning that we're just saying yeah, yeah. that that's usually what happens yeah that's usually what it leads to because they're not gonna you know sometimes they're not gonna fight back they're gonna be pissed off about it but it's gonna be like okay all right i see how i see how it's gonna be mm -hmm. that type of thing and, it, and that's pretty toxic it can be so we did have a question i have some more questions in dms but i asked this question for a reason because I knew somebody didn't know the difference. They said, what mm -hmm. is the difference between complaining and venting in a man's perspective? Like, 
there is a difference. For instance, uh, I asked Jenna when she came home, we were all having dinner and I was like, how was your day? Tell me about your day at work. And she vented. So she's complaining about like her workspace, but she's at, she's in no way projecting those emotions onto me. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So yeah, she's complaining. She's like, man, these fucking idiots that yeah, and she didn't say that, but she's, <laughs> she's complaining about whatever, right? Okay. <laughs> she's complaining about whatever at work and, but she's not projecting it onto me. She's not yeah. like, She's not like her, her mood and what she dealt with at work isn't transpiring to me. Like, why didn't you take this trash out? Like, why is this still here? This trash has been sitting here since yesterday. I asked you yesterday to do it. That's how it always starts with women in the house. Then so you know that would you say like another way to uh, this is just a teaching exercise. So say the trash needs to go out. So uh -huh. here's how a woman thinks. The trash, it smells, the trash needs to go out. Like, why isn't he taking out the trash? A hundred percent how women think. So we end up going like, are you going to take the trash out? Like, can you take the trash out, please? Like, take it out. But it's that, okay. it's that tone right there. Can you take the trash out or like what? You know what I mean? Like, it, it's mm -hmm. almost in a way of like, are you dumb? Like, don't you smell it? Like, it, and yeah, it's, it's condescending. extremely condes condescending. So mm -hmm. if you say, if you say something along the lines of, um, hey, um, do you mind taking the trash out, please? It's stinking up the house a little bit. It's a, mm -hmm. it is your delivery is completely different mm -hmm. versus you're, you're frustrated. You're, you know, you got a baby on the hip. You're doing the, you know, cooking the dinner and you're irritated because it smells and you're just like, you know, <laughs> Jick said she can take it out. <laughs> Jicks, I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> um, See, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm kind of uh, like that too. Jix, what Jix said. Um, yes, I do agree with that. But what I'm saying is your delivery when you're when you're asking your spouse for something or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, it, it is all about your delivery. You don't want to push off what you're going through onto that other person mm -hmm. because all of a sudden they're like, ow, like that stung a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. What Jick said, she can take it out. You're right. We can take take it out. I think it's being considerate of your uh, your spouse and what she's handling. And if you come home and you go to put something in the, you know what my ex-husband used to do? The trash would be over, over fully, overfilled. And I would be cooking mm -hmm. and he'd grab something and he'd push it down. And I'm like, can you mm -hmm. take it? Can you take that out? Like yeah. you see that it's full. You see that I'm doing five different things. Like, can yeah. you help me out? You know? Yeah. So like, to me, if you know that your spouse is like, it's being consciously aware of what your partner is contributing to make your life easier. And, mm -hmm. and, and, not just understanding what they're doing, being appreciative of it. And that's how women feel. They feel so many women feel undervalued and underappreciated because they feel like they do so much things for their spouses. OK. Mm -hmm. And so what do women do when they feel undervalued and underappreciated? They hold sex back because they know how important mm -hmm. it is to men. It's they a bad, know bad it move. is. It is. But women do that, which yeah. starts the miscommunication and the, and the sex problems in the relationship. So you see mm. how it's a big circle, that if women and men both communicated how they needed their relationship to work, I need you to appreciate me and, and help me out where you see that I need help. If you see that I'm doing 50 things and you see the trash, I just need you to be a little more observant. And the mm. husband telling the, the wife, I've worked all day and I'm coming home to you. I just want to be around smiles. And if you need something, just let me know. Like, hey, babe, the yeah. trash is full. Can you help me out? It's all about communication. Yeah. And not communicating in a condescending way. So yes. how do you do that? Right. How do you do that? Well, this is how you do that. OK, one, one good tip. And actually, me and Jenna used to do this a lot, especially early on. Uh, we probably should do it more. So I, I call this checks and balances. So on Wednesdays at six o'clock, she can have a wine. I might have a whiskey sour. We're going to sit down in front of each other, take 30 minutes, maybe, but checks and balances. So the conversation isn't how was your day and all this stuff. The, the, the conversation is running checks and balances. How are you? Everything good? What's any issues that you got that I, maybe I'm not fulfilling or taking care of? Let's lay that out right here, not in a condescending way. So when you know checks and balances hour is coming up on Wednesday at six o'clock, both know to check their ego at the door. So we're coming into this in a non-condescending way and we're, we're hearing the problems or the concerns that each of us have. So you get one round 
and then I get the next one. You don't get to interrupt me. You don't you you get to comply or meet me halfway. Mm-hmm. That's that's like the that. agreement going into it. You take 30 minutes, you don't you don't attack each other and then that's that's like the problem saving it's the problem solving round table. You know what I'm saying? We we haven't done it in a long time, but maybe we should, but we used to call it checks and balances. Mhm. Well, well, like even even like this, when you and I had discussed doing doing this podcast, because in the beginning it was just I would have you on so often. And then when I asked you to be on here more regularly, mm-hmm. how you know, how did it make the decision like, yeah, let's do it. He immediately was like, I got to talk to Jenna. I got to talk mm-hmm. to my wife, which I thought was so respectful that instead mm-hmm. of taking on more, because he already does so much when it comes to to our community, that instead of taking on more, because I know he would in a heartbeat because, you know, he would want to help me out. Mm-hmm. But his wife is the number one person in his life, his wife and his, and his son. And so mm-hmm. instead of making a commitment of, of giving more time away from his family, he said, no, I'm going to check with my wife, which I found mm-hmm. extremely respectful. And uh, and, I, and I'm also going to say it's not because she runs my life, right? It's I, I would tell her, even if she was in here right now, I'd say she doesn't answer what I do. She doesn't tell me what to do. She doesn't get to do that. Just like I don't get to do that for her. I allow her that power because I respect her and this is what it's about, right? So I didn't want to take away more time from her because she has to take care of the kid and I got to make sure I'm always doing my 50-50. So you always got to be doing those checks and balances in your head. So like, okay, if I want to do this extra thing, I should include my spouse because is that going to give me 51%? If it does, then you have to, you have to scale it back and you got to run it by them. You have to. Anytime that thing, yeah. Anytime that thing starts to run off balance, you have to check in with them, man. It's, it's just respect for the person that you are running a life with. It's not you by yourself. It isn't. I think it also runs back to integrity as you are as a person like you. The last thing you want to do is take advantage of the person that you're with. So if you live in integrity, it's more easier for you to recognize "Eh, it's a little out of whack right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have. But you got to be self because like we all get selfish, right? We're all like, oh, man, I want to do this. Or you get you can't fuck it. You don't live alone anymore. You don't fucking live alone. There was something that someone said the other day, right? They were like, uh, no, I'm not doing that. Or this is my life or it's my privacy or something like that. Well, why the fuck are you in a relationship? You're, you're, it's no longer your anything. It's no longer your privacy or it's, it's you have to figure it out together. You really do. It's a different mindset. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I, I And I like the fact that you do checks and balances. I, I honestly think that I'm going to incorporate that in my life if I ever get to a point of of uh, living with somebody or, or, you know, married one day. Like, I, I will incorporate that in my life. Checks and balances. I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. Well, do, do it, Yeah, do it with the boyfriend that you're with right now. Um. So I have another question here. It says... Um, this was about the video that I just posted yesterday, um, last night. And it says, um, and the video was basically talking about um, communication and how it's the number one uh, ending in marriage and mm-hmm. it, the lack of. And the question was, I've had this experience where we might have days where we, where we text on a constant basis, but when I have days where I'm busy at like work and couldn't message like how I did previously, I later get called out on it. To me personally, that's what would annoy me, the being understanding part of communication. I will admit when I first started dating, I was like that, but now I have a different way to look at it. So they're basically saying that they have days where they're texting constantly and days where they're very busy at work and they can't text constantly. And so they felt called out by the people that they were talking to saying, um, you know, you were really talkative to me in the beginning and now you're not. That's what he fell in love with. Somebody that was super attentive, super involved, showed priority to his being. Mm -hmm. I don't blame him. I'm not mad at him. Maybe... He, he's noticing a change, a change in their genuine interaction with each other. And he's questioning it. Any Anything that changes in like your day to day or any changes in behavior from your spouse is warrants a question, I think. So what if, devil's advocate here, what if the person is very, very talkative one day and then the next day knows they're going to have a busy day? 
knows that they're going to have meetings, knows that they're going to have appointments. So they start their day with a text and saying, good morning, beautiful. I hope you have a good day. I'm going to, I have meetings all day. I'll text you when I can. I think that should be, that, that would be suffice. That would suffice for the other person. I think so. I, th I think, I think, for, I think for the guy questioning it, it's, it's not about the text messages, Trish. You it's think about, it's about the interaction lack of, mm -hmm. it's about, uh, not feeling prioritized, like compared to work. I, I would like to think that I'm the most important thing, regardless of what kind of job you got. Yeah. Now I'm not demanding that you text me immediately, but if I, if I don't even get a text back, I mean, I must say something too. Yeah. Because if I'm going to show you the same respect, if you text me, I might not be able to text immediately, but if I care about you, I'm going to hit you back with a text. And if I don't hit you back with a text and then it's been hours upon hours, I expect you to ask me what the fuck was up. Yeah. Well, that I was, do. that was one of the main comments that we got in that video was, you know, people saying, well, this man's probably never worked a day in his life or never worked blue collar yeah, because there's I leave my phone in the truck or what about a surgeon? Like they were all making these excuses. But you know what I noticed? You know what I noticed? They were text. They were making these comments at 1145 p.m. Mm -hmm. yeah, they were making they're making it at 248 yes. p.m. Thank you. 8 a.m. They're full of shit. And I'm like. If you have the time to leave a comment on a completely random TikTok, you have the time to yes. check in with people that matter to you. If you got time to shake it in a bathroom, you got time to, sh to, to text somebody. You're, right? you're going to the bathroom, you're eating lunch, you're taking breaks. No one's fucking eight hours a day just, I, I, my hands are completely occupied, I can't do shit. They opened that fucking TikTok and, and, and texted a comment, didn't they? They're full of shit. You know, you know what men do? Women do this shit too. You know, you know why they're fucking saying that? Because their, their spouses are saying something to them, but they're gonna stand their ground. You know why? Because they use that excuse to vanish. That's why. That's I'm a good point. I'm busy. I'm busy. They're, they're not going to give it up because they use these things to vanish. Like that's what they're doing. They're not going to say, oh, he's right. Hell no. Nah. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to hold their like stance on it because they're not going to be able to fish at that pond anymore if they give up the secret, right? If, if my, finally my wife believes that I have time to text message, I can never sneak off, be away from my phone for any given time now. Whereas two hours, he probably fucking talking to a girl or like flirting with somebody for two hours and he can say, oh, I was busy at work. That's an easy scapegoat. That's why I tell people, that's why I tell men and women in the chat, if your spouse is doing something out of the ordinary, if the truth that is coming out of their mouth when you ask them a question because something seems suspicious is not simple and consistent, they're full of shit. And they're lying. I'm 100% going to stand behind that. Agreed. If you're questioning them because you're already suspicious and the stuff that comes out of their mouth isn't simple and consistent. Only truth is simple and consistent. Only lies are complicated and inconsistent. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do not give up your stance when you catch that motherfucker. Because if you do, if you give it up, if you take that first bait, he will come back to that pond and fish there again. Yes. And then you're going to be looking at that lie again, and you ain't got no choice but to take it again because you believed it the first time. They're going to use it. Trust me. Anytime. Listen, <laughs> I just told you about the, the, the lying thing. The other thing is nothing good happens after 12. Don't believe nothing. After fucking midnight, ain't nothing good going on. Not without you there. Yeah. That's for damn sure. Don't believe a fucking thing comes out of their mouth. So we have a qu don't unpin that question because I want to answer that question. But Lexi is a first time chatter. She just came in and I, I have to point it out. It says, I think personal space and privacy is important too. It is 100% personal space and privacy. Not when you're married though. Not, not when, when you're yeah. married. Not when you're married. Not when you're married. Not when you're in a relationship. Not like, yeah, not when you're married. I just say when you're married. Yeah. Like, hell no. If you want privacy and solitude, go be single. Go be single. Exactly. Shit. So many, you, you, you can't hold on to like, like, okay. If you're talking about privacy in the sense to where like, I want to like, I don't want to shower. I don't like showering with my significant other or I like I, I want alone time so I yeah. can read a book completely different. Yeah. That's but different. the moment somebody if I like if I'm married to somebody and he says, I'm feeling a little insecure right now. Can I look in your phone? I do this in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you my phone. 
I'm giving you yeah, my phone you because I nothing nothing in here matters more to me than my relationship. And if I'm doing something goofy, I deserve to be caught. Period. And here's the other thing. If you're in a relationship and you won't give up your phones because you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. Otherwise, what does it matter? If you're not doing anything you ain't supposed to be doing. So, men, ladies in here, there's some men right now, their booty holes are puckering the <laughs> fuck up right now because I'm dropping truth on you. If they're not letting you in their phone, if they're not giving it to you immediately when you ask for it because they got something on there they don't want you to find. That's going to be a true, a hard truth fact. If you ask for their phone and I'm doing nothing wrong whatsoever on my phone, I will hand it over to you in 0.2 seconds. If they're not handing it over to you, women too, guys. If you're asking for your woman's phone and they're refusing to give it to you because they need their privacy, that's just breaking the code. I'm not going to do that. I'm my own man. They're doing something they ain't supposed to be doing. 100%. Yes. And... and <laughs> So we'll get we'll get into the whole catching a cheater here in a, in a minute. But I, I'll tell you this: not not even doing something with their phone, their mannerisms with their phone. Um, somebody told me a story today. Um, was it you who told me? Somebody told me a story today um, that crap. I don't remember who it was, but they were talking about how she. It was Mel. How they were driving in their car and she had never seen her boyfriend run ever. And so he realized that he forgot his phone in his car and his girlfriend was driving away. Mm, there it is. Doing something. And knew immediately that something Done. something was off. You Done. know? And, and, and like I said, I... There's... No. There's so much to go with, like, in a relationship. You're, you're especially in today, where everything is so easy to easily to hide and obtain. There's so many yeah. things, a, a ways to, like, work around it. And... And um, think about the people that they surround themselves with. If they're hanging out with men that have divorced because one cheated on them, think about like who they're hanging around with. Mm. They're teaching them like how to like live life. And you have to, you have to recognize that too. So like um, in, in relationships that I have, I remember somebody telling me a story about in, and I won't name who they are about how, they were swingers, okay? It, it was in a relationship where they were swingers and they were swinging with each other. And I was friends with both, both the husband and the wife. And she would tell me stories about how the, the other husband would message her. And he, he would tell me stories about how the other wife would message him. But neither of them knew that they were talking mm. to them out of this mm. group chat. And I thought to myself, not only do you have a relationship where you're experimenting this together, but now you're being deceptive when you mm -hmm. have something, when you already have the place to be open. And so it immediately told me, nah, if you're going to be a swinger, I don't care. Live your life. But it was the deception that they were both doing behind each other's backs where I said, I don't know if I really want to associate with these people anymore mm -hmm. because my integrity what to me would be come in question. You surround yourself with like minded people. And that just wasn't for me. So think about that, too. It's funny, too, because like when I think about it, I naturally go back to because I always play devil's advocate, too, because mm -hmm. I want to say I want to say, well, are they doing anything wrong? Because I mean, they've already partaken into like the worst thing that you could do, right? If you're but married they agreed so, to do it together, right? They agreed to do it together. So now, like, I'm going to be mad that they're texting. So like so like so would they be mad if they went off and like shimmied each other? They'd be mad too then, huh, I guess. It's just weird rules to me. It it I, well, I think the moment that like it, it's just it's just a sticky situation to begin with. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just don't and, think, and, yeah. and when you use it as a thing to save your marriage, because a lot of couples do that, like let's introduce somebody to save our marriage, you're nah, you're already yeah. doomed. You're already hey, doomed. That, ain't no saving, man. Like there's that's not a saving marriage, man. Like that's I don't no. I don't even understand that. Uh, I want to say this real quick. So J Dubs, man, I see you in the chat, big dog. I've got your I've got your question. I did not want to read it live on stream without proofreading it first, man. But this is one of the questions that I plan on tackling um, and maybe bringing up in the next stream. But I'm going to message you back here soon on it, okay? I just wanted him to know that because he messaged me a long one, and I'm sure yeah. he's waiting on the answer for that. So one of the questions that we have is why do men hold all that in and proceed to, uh, to cheat uh, instead of removing themselves from the relationship? Uh, just like women. So, like, I, I, I'm a... So I, I majored in, uh, I majored in sociology and psychology. There's this thing called the spiraling staircase of commitment. 
okay it's mm -hmm. it's an actual term just like freudian slip and all that stuff so it's an actual study that takes place and the case says that the the longer the longer that i endure something or a commitment the more that gets piled on that i make part of myself so bought a house bought a car married this woman had a kid now I had a second kid the more things they get tacked on the more i go up the stairs of commitment and the harder it is to come back down so a weak person a weak-minded individual who's not getting what he wants out of the marriage which is intimacy touch whatever or he's just not getting what he wants period as mm -hmm. far as his love language a weak-minded person is going to step out because he doesn't want to fracture the spiraling staircase of commitment does that make sense absolutely it does yeah so like we don't want to he doesn't want to put all his eggs into this basket because most of his eggs are over here but I'm not happy. This thing over here makes me happy. At the same time, I can maintain this if I'm smart about it. That's where it ends up getting them. So mm -hmm. and, well, and we're, we're not counting the scumbags, right, Trish? So scumbags are going to be scumbags. The oh, ones yeah. That yeah. Just scumbags, sleep around, yeah, whatever. Just don't yeah, we're not care. counting those yeah. guys. Yeah, we're yeah. not counting we're them. I mean, I, I would say like most men, most men who cheat on their significant other or most women who cheat on their. Well, actually, no, I, I have a different perspective on that. I would say most men who cheat on their wives, it's usually because they they love their wives and mm. and. and they're not getting fulfilled in it. And so instead of leaving because mm -hmm. they love their wives, they love their mm -hmm. family, they think in their mind that they can convince themselves that they are okay with stepping out on the marriage because it's just sex or it's just an emotional connection and they mm -hmm. keep it separate. They compartmentalize it in their mind because it's separate from what they have here. And it's, it, it makes them happier because then they can be a better husband or whatever. It, it, it's when you break it down, it, it is disturbing. But I really think that that's one of the reasons why men don't leave their marriages is because they can compartmentalize it in their mind that it's completely separate things. Mm -hmm. um, with women, I think women cheat and don't leave is because they're looking for someone to fulfill this void that maybe can save them from their situations. And instead of leaving... And, and and taking the chance that I'll meet somebody, you know, new that'll make me happy. They try to find somebody new in the relationship and confirm that they can make them happy before they leave. So I think that's the difference with men and women. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I would. Um, there was something that I was going to tack on or right onto that, but you started making such a good point that I can't even remember what it was. Um, shit. Yeah, I can't even think of it. But no, I agree with everything that you said on both both parts. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then we have another question um, off the chain said, why would a man say he's interested in a woman and likes her, but doesn't want anything serious? He's not that into you. Who? He's, he doesn't like you enough. Because, yeah. You know why? You know why? And this is going to be hard truth. You know why? Because currently you're winning the rat, the rat race. Currently, you're the best out of the pick. Does that make sense? But he doesn't Men want do to pick yet. Yeah, you're the best out of the pick, but he there's 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 not enough there for him to commit to that, right? So like you won the race against the other three that he's dating, and you're just like maybe you're barely in front of the other girl. I know that sounds bad, but that's truth. That's a fact, man. If like if a guy has options and he's dating around or like. Sometimes like they're in a situation where like, man, this is all, this is all I got. She's good enough for now. She keeps me occupied. She gives me company and he has a lot of fun with you. And sometimes that's good enough, but not good enough to get you here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that's just the way men think. I'm, I'm sorry. That's cruel, but so that's the way it is. This is a very good segue into one of the best comments that I saw in that video where I was just thwarted i got thwarted in the chat it was terrible mm. but this was the best comment that i saw in this video that got one point it has 1.1 million views right now basically the video was uh, the if you have not seen the video the video was saying that who bases their um connection with women more on physicalities male or female and house mm -hmm. had said that females do and i baited him in the questioning and said why and he said because of the checklist so that's how we got into that conversation 
Here's the comment. Women don't want to hear this stuff because it destroys their concept of men and they have to accept that they're just as shallow as men, if not more. There you go. And when I read that, I was like, holy shit, that is probably mm. the most eloquent way that you can you can put into words that women are just we, we are just as shallow as men uh, are just as shallow we yeah. are just as shallow as men not shallower just as shallow just as shallow we're yes. all shallow to an extent right yes. we've got preferences we've got this idea of what we want the only thing that i it's okay to have preferences the only thing that i have a problem with is like don't say this isn't okay while I'm in a direct example of what I said is not okay. And I think there's a lot of that hypocrisy just in society, period, over a lot of stuff. I just can't stand that shit. I really can't. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I agreed with you completely when we had had this conversation before. Um, I know it seemed like I didn't, but I, I did. No, you I know. Yeah. No, uh, this is the point. This is the, like to get to, to get responses, reactions. That's the whole fucking point. Get people thinking. Like if you, if you agreed with everything, even though you did agree right there, but if you agreed, if we just sat here and I agreed with everything you said, there's no rebuttal, no like different perspective. It's boring. It's boring. So, so like, that's yeah. how you have to do it. Um, that's good stuff. So I actually had, um, I won't name her name because she didn't say if it was okay, but a woman in my chat who said that she was married for 17 years, um, no kids involved, but she ended up cheating. And she said no uh -huh. excuse, but she had cheated. And, and mm -hmm. I mean, I thank you for, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people would like admit to that. Even if they mm -hmm. got caught like red handed, they wouldn't admit to cheating. Mm hmm. Have you only been no. cheated on once? But but was it only that by I know of that you know of that I know of, right? I mean, but um, I mean, I saw it coming. All and th and that's what we should go into right now. Yeah, like the signs of cheating. Right? Yeah. How, how do you how do you catch them, man? Listen, and I just said it, right? I mm -hmm. just fucking said it, like with the phone. Anytime there's a change in behavior, change in response, change in normalcy. Like with like you've known this person forever like you know how they breathe yeah. almost right and something changes how they look at you you know how your spouse looks at you you need to question it yeah question it every fucking time anytime there's a change man like i said truth is consistent there if someone's truly happy right and this goes back to what we just talked about ladies and you're not gonna like this you don't want your man to cheat on you make him happy ladies or men you don't want your ladies to cheat on them make them happy 100 percent. are you giving them 100 percent of you ladies are you giving your man 100 percent of you I, I guarantee you you're not because you're always looking at the 50 50 oh i'm only going to give 30 percent because i don't feel like he's giving 50 but you haven't communicated about it it shouldn't be 50 50 it should be 100 100 if both people are giving 100 100 both are very happy not looking over the fence like that's the solution for the cheating thing yeah but if any of that stuff changes man like behavior something's acting weird they're fucking not at home when they should be or like they're acting weird on their phone it's like nothing specific but it's like anything that breaks normalcy or consistency it should be a red flag and never let your spouse man or woman gaslight you and say you're crazy like oh I can't my god that. that could literally send me right now but you know what I'm saying? They do that shit on purpose. Yeah, because then you start thinking like, yeah, oh my God, am I being crazy? Yeah. Like, like, yeah, no. Yeah, it, it like deflates you. Like that's the whole point of that. Oh, you're crazy. Like why you need to look at my phone and like, see, there's nothing on it. Snatches the phone back. It didn't even give you a chance to look at it really, right? So like, they're just avoiding. They're just bullshitting, trying to get to the next stop. But like, do not fucking listen to that shit. No. You suspect, you suspect for a reason. You're right. You don't need, to, if you suspect, you are 100% right. Now go find it. That's, that's the best. Never doubt yourself. And Never it is, for once. And I'm telling you right now, it's easier than you think it is. One, like, don't steal somebody's property so that you can look at something. Like, if somebody, if you ask somebody to see their phone, don't take it from them. Like, they're not giving you their phone. Obviously, they're hiding they're something. Cheating. Get the fuck yeah, out of there. Yeah. But, like, um, I remember in an instance where I was cheated on. Um, this was somebody that... Um, it was my, I'm sorry that my stories are all about my ex-husband, but it was my longest relationship. We were together for 12 years. So I remember when we first started dating, I had asked him to like send photos of himself to me. And he's like, nope, I've never sent a, I've never sent a dick pic and I'm not going to start now. Like he just would not send one of those pictures. 
So I just went my whole relationship never getting one of those photos from my ex-husband ever. Mm -hmm. No big deal. So Don't then tell I, me you just got a dick pic out of nowhere. No, no. So I, at this point, was already feeling like something was off. You know what yeah. I mean? And so I had, I knew the password to his phone and I opened up his phone and I just like went to like the photos and didn't see anything in there. And then I went to the recently deleted photos. What did I tell you last week? Yeah. You never mentioned that. I've never, that I've, either, I've never told you. Oh, I never told me. Wait till I, I'm going to blow your mind with some more stuff. Like I'm going to blow lady, your mind. So she's going to finish this. But ladies and men, when you check in those phones and the photos, look at the deleted photos and look at the hidden folder. That's where everyone hides their shit. They don't hide it in the album. They delete it. It sits in your deleted folder for a month for one month, 30 days. <laughs> yes. So I had gone into the deleted folder. This is before they required a password to go into the deleted folder. Now you need a password. But anyways, I went in there and there was nothing but dick pics mm. that I had never yeah. received. So then But see, what got you to that point though? So like what 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 break in consistent life like life living? Mm -hmm. You've been with him for a super long time. What started to break that made you even suspect? So you know that there is, um, huh, I haven't thought about this in a long time. Um, you know, like when you can tell somebody is genuinely happy to see you. They see you and mm. they're like, it's so good to see you. How was your day? You could see mm. it in their eyes and their facial expressions. He would come home and he'd be like, hi, honey, how was your day? And mm, I was like, being fake. Yeah, something's yeah. off. <laughs> like, it's that simple. Something's it's off. It's that fucking simple though, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like the guilt, man, like the guilt, like it just resides in men and women that do this and it plays out in them acting like, like exaggerated responses when they deal with you, acting like nothing's wrong, trying to make you think, hey, we're hunky dory happy so you don't suspect anything like, yeah, but the guilt sits in there and it comes out in exaggerated behaviors all around. And it, you only, all you got to do is be paying attention. Oh, and I That's was it, right. And, and, and you were and he, he'd come home like, honey, I miss you so much. And I'm like, who the fuck am I married to Mickey Mouse? Right. Like, he's there like, oh, hi, guys. Like, how's it going? Like, I was and totally you, getting a different vibe from him. And you know what's funny and i'm glad she shared this example because this is the other side of the spectrum this is she she noticed a change in behavior for the positive he was being overly nice he was being yep. like it just seemed disingenuous because this isn't him still a break in consistency which is the truth right of yep. who he actually is in this case it wasn't him coming home starting an argument with her nope. it wasn't him like ignoring her or like getting like like super annoyed by her this was like in a positive way so it's again it comes down to the break in consistency yep. like you know him and it wasn't even like he didn't even do anything wrong. You just like notice, hey, this is weird right here. This feels off. It, it just seemed like he was, it was like acting. It seemed like he yes. was acting. And so it just, it, and I don't want to say like intuition. It just put, it put a pit in my stomach where I was like, this is different. This mm -hmm. is very different. Yep. And so it, I remember looking in his phone and, the, and, the, and this was a day that he had came home and he was like, hi, I love you, blah, 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 blah. And then I looked in his phone and I saw the dick pics and I, in my mind was like, all right, I'll, I'll bring it up tomorrow. And I like I literally put the phone down and I, and he's laying in the bed next to me and I lay down mm -hmm. and I went, fuck that shit, turned around and fucking woke him up. And I was like, why the fuck do you have dick pics in your phone? Like what's happening? Mm. And he was like, oh, I just wanted to see, like, I haven't, like, I just received, I still had it. Like I haven't okay. seen myself. Blah, 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 blah. So let me, let me, let me interject right here. So the, what the man did when he got called out for lying. Okay. He threw his, he's fishing at the pond. He threw out his first bait. If she would have took that first bait right there, it would have got more extravagant. It would have yeah. got more detailed. And the fact that she didn't back, did you back down from that? No, I did not. She didn't back down from that, so it didn't work. You see what I'm saying? Do not back down ever when you're confronting your spouse or the person that you're in a relationship with, man, man or woman. You want to know you what suspect, he did next? You're fucking right. What? Want to know what he did next? He gaslighted you. I didn't take the bait. And I said, bullshit. I said, bullshit, dude. 
you did not take these photos of yourself because you wanted to see if you still got it. Right. This is what he said. Why are you in my fucking phone? Why That's are you invading you my see? privacy? Crazy. This is my phone. I can't believe that you yep. would sneak my phone they while I'm sleeping time. and open it up and go through what's in my phone. Mm -hmm. And so then I'm how like, how dare you? How dare you? And so I'm in my mind going, ah, oh, he's right. I did sneak his phone instead of asking it. And so I'm thinking like, Okay, maybe he's embarrassed because he thought he could get, you know, he maybe he was just seeing if he was okay. Exactly, you start second guessing. And so, like, then I end up apologizing for going in in my mm -hmm. husband of ten damn. years at this point's I'll phone. Be damn. Yes, I felt terrible. So then, what happened the next day? I'm gonna go out. I'm not gonna come home right after work. I'm really, oh, I'm really stressed. What did I say? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, man! So you took the first bait, and then he went back to the like. It's an excuse to yep. go do something now. It's a, yep. now he's got the excuse to be off his phone for the next two yep. hours. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's like clock. I didn't know any of this stuff. She has never told me any of it. I've never it told him a, any this of this stuff. This is a universal script men and women in this chat this is it works the same for everybody so like, then, this is crazy so then we're like working on it for like a week our marriage and stuff like that but i still can't get rid of this pit in my stomach i can't trust get rid that, of it trust that pit trust it man and i i remember going uh, i don't want to look at his phone again i'm gonna look i'm not gonna look at his phone again and i was like no i'm gonna do it and he was asleep he was a hard sleeper so I grabbed it and I went to the living room and I searched, 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 clean as a whistle until, <laughs> until, this is the way, this is the way, ladies, take notes if you don't know this. I went to his apps and you go to recently purchased apps and it shows you every single app that has ever been downloaded associated with that Apple iTunes account. And what did I find? Dating apps. Mm-hmm. Damn. And not only do you see the dating apps, it tells you what day they downloaded the dating apps. And mm. what day was this dating app downloaded? A day before he came home. Hi, honey. How's it going? Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> I mean, so, it sucks. I'm not laughing because of that, but I'm 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 proud of you. Right, because you fucking figured it out. Now, yes, I did. the uh, The only thing that sucks is because she didn't she didn't stay true to her guns. You did not stand your ground right there. Then you got cheated on the next day. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas if you were able to be like, "Nah, fuck that. This is boy. You either tell me you get the fuck out of here. Like that. That is where you stand on that. And then if he chooses not to tell you, then he leaves. Yeah. But you you can sit in solitude and be like, "Man, I got him because uh, you just got him. He might not admit it to you, but you just got him. But because she didn't, she ended up getting cheated on the very next day. And, and you get what I'm saying? Here's the thing: is I had given him so many opportunities to say, mm -hmm. "I'm not happy." I don't want to be in this relationship I, by by not only catching him, but like yeah. I was having these conversations and I was literally right there like, tell me. And he would not tell me. And so that's what I mean. If somebody you know is why. going to do it, they're going to do it. Yeah. That spiraling staircase outweighed everything that he got going on, man. You, he'd been with you for a long time. Kid. Kid. Right? Yep. House, whatever. Like you, you've been with him from the beginning. Y'all been through thick and thin. Like mm -hmm. that's that spiraling staircase of commitment, man. You get mm -hmm. fucking trapped in that shit. But like, he wasn't happy, so he did these things and yeah. lied to you in the process. So this is, I mean, this is this is this happens the same way for everybody. It Literally does. for everyone. Um. So we have a question in chat that's pinned. What about him saying I don't, I didn't delete it, so I wasn't hiding it. He's full. Of, why is he on it? Don't even listen to that shit. Listen, do not listen to that. See, that's ridiculous. Like, he's just throwing that word makes vomit me so out mad. there. so mad. Yeah. He, he just, you know what he's trying to do? Listen, I'm going to tell you what that tactic is. I'm going to tell you because I'm a guy. There's a tactic that we like to use. Women use it too. I'm not trying to pick on just the men. Women use this shit too. There's a saying that we all say, hide in broad daylight. Yep. You are correct. You caught my app. You know what? Yeah, I got my, that's, yeah, I got that on there. But look, I didn't delete it because I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. Look at it. It's right there. Otherwise, I would have deleted it. I, you got it on my phone. You have access to it. I'm not doing anything wrong. How, how stupid do you think I am? 
Huh? Gaslighting, turning it back on you. Oh, now you feel pretty stupid now, right? So now she's going to deflate a little bit, come off her level, and I just got away scot-free, fishing my ass off. Don't let him do it, man. Don't let him do it. Could not agree with you more. And and I'm not saying, like, uh, like, you know, women go check to see if your husbands are cheating. Like, if you have a happy marriage and you're like, ever, and, and yeah. men too, like, like, don't rock, don't rock your boat. Like, don't, don't make, don't make a think that there's an issue in your mind if you are perfectly happy. I'm more telling you of experience how I yeah. came to. You know I what think, I mean? I think we made that clear though. I, I we're saying if you suspect, happy people don't suspect anything. If you're happy, you're not suspecting, okay? If you're not happy and you've been suspecting, you're probably fucking right. I'm going to ask this question, and I want I don't want you to respond with any words. I want you to respond with um, charades because I already know what you're going to do. You ready? What if you found out your husband has been searching other girls? What does that mean? Oh. No, no words. Show me. Charades. Oh, what do you mean? Sh Charades. Show you? What is that? Uh, yeah, I mean. He's fishing. He's fishing. Don't fucking listen. Oh my God! It's, so now I want now I want to talk about it. Say the question again. Say it one more time for everybody. What if what you say? found out your husband has Damn, been man. searching other girls? What does that mean? Oh my God, man! <laughs> no, stop it! <laughs> no, I'm not saying I'm not making like. No, I know you're not making fun. I'm saying like. No, I'm not. I'm not making fun of her. Like I feel bad. Like what I hate about this is like she is so whoever put it in the chat and i'm not saying this to her specifically or to him okay i feel bad because like the mental mindset that you're in because of I, the way whoever you're with gaslights you and like mm -hmm. puts you down on a level below them the fact that you know better right right now you know you, you know, know yeah. but you still ask the question that's where he has you right now or she like i you have the answer like you don't even need me to answer that we we just all. explained how men gaslight and women do it too but we just explained from the experience that i was going through how men do it we gave you all of it we gave you all of the description and after that you still asked your question but what does it mean if he does this you know means, you means know what that means means he's not happy he's just cheating period or he's going to he's about to maybe you caught it in time maybe he ain't found anything yet but he's thinking about it he is. so he's he's not happy with something possibly with you i'm not saying that to tell you that it's your fault i'm no, telling you not. to warn you before it either gets before it even starts or to call him the fuck out and if you care about him enough now you've got the ammo you need to maybe start doing some problem solving okay if you care but if you don't give a fuck if you're just as unhappy as him seize the opportunity to get the fuck out because he's either doing it or he's starting to a happy man ain't got no reason to look Look at other women. Agreed. And he's not saying he's not saying it is your responsibility to make him happy with himself and all that stuff. There's men who have their own issues. <sighs> hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. Go, no. I'm letting you go. I got a question that I really want to fucking ask okay. from Honey Baby. There, there are men who have their own issues that don't deal with them and they project onto other people. So in no way is it your responsibility to heal somebody at all. But if you choose to be in a relationship with somebody who is broken, who's gone through trauma and still needs to be healed, just know you are also taking on that accountability because you know this going in on it. So in that turns, if you're dating somebody who you know has cheated before or, or, has cheated on you before and you stay with them just know that's your that that you're partially mm. you know at fault for that yeah and i i also do agree though like whatever you endure or partake in like from past relationships you got to be really careful not to bring that shit agreed to the so like i got cheated on in my marriage i divorced her immediately in no way did that affect whether or not I could trust the next person that I was with. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, 
I didn't immediately go into that relationship like, oh, no, I need to see her phone. She needs to tell me where she's going. I need to know what she's into, what she's up to. I reset myself, and I went back to what I always do. Now, if I'm with somebody and then her behavior starts to change, then I'm going to start digging. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's the, that's the, that, and, and I know it's hard, right? You get traumatized. You get some PTSD, man, from your past relationships, and sometimes that carries over. But, man, that's how you're going to ruin your relationship. And that's kind of what, kind of how you were saying, like, you, you, you take on the responsibility. Yes, you do. So, sometimes that's a lot of baggage. It is. And yeah. sometimes, sometimes it's unwarranted. And, like, so, like some men get blindsided by getting treated wrongly by because a woman that was woman. treated bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some men don't want that baggage. Some men don't. I completely understand. Truth. Completely yeah. understand. You gotta be careful with it. You gotta be careful with it. But if I know about it and I know that she's fragile or like emotionally damaged, then, you know, I've got, I got to show a lot of patience because it's it's not it's not easy to just like not be affected by your experiences. It's not. I, I and, understand that I'm a rare breed when it comes to that. I know I've met a lot of men who uh, like, for instance, with me and stuff that I've gone through um, that wanted to like be a knight in shining armor and and, you know, show me what real love is or what real whatever is but i just wasn't ready for that stuff in my mm -hmm. life you know what i mean and i and i'm so glad that i was like self-aware of that because you've heard me say i put a wall up and i don't want anybody to come in well my wall wasn't just to protect me my wall was to protect you because i wasn't healed right you know right um ask your question yeah i want to hear it so honey baby says uh I have a quick question. What does it mean when out of nowhere he doesn't want to be with you? It means there's someone else. It means there's period. somebody else, period. So look, here's how, it, here's how it goes. Yes, some people can fall out of love, but again, remember when I told you about the spiraling staircase of commitment? I've been trapped in that before with girls that I was with, and because they didn't do anything wrong, because they were good girls, I stayed with them. And I didn't necessarily like them, I didn't want to break their heart. A lot of men do that shit. They yeah. fucking take on. They, they're like, you know what? I'm just going to like, I'm, she's a good girl. She's very loyal. Mm -hmm. men, will, men will trap themselves in relationships like that. I did it twice. Eee. So I, I know for a fact. So, so in her case right there. So like I say that to say this. We're going to be there. So like if you've been with him through thick and thin and maybe from the beginning, he didn't just he didn't just wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm leaving. We don't do that shit. We do not problem solve like that. He's got something else going on. Now, yeah. if I'm not happy in my relationship and somebody amazing steps in line or steps in the path, then that's going to make me say, you know what? I'm not even happy over here anyways. I'm going to go do this now. This makes me way more happy. But if I don't have anything else going on, a lot of men will just find themselves in that situation. And, and he said that he was thinking it over for a month. No, he's that's done. That's his way. Yeah, that's his way of being nice. You're, you, I'm going to tell you why. You're, you've been good to him. You've been really good mm -hmm. to him. Um he has no reason to break your heart, and he refuses to break your heart with that news. I'm, I'm just, and, and listen, you're gonna say, you're gonna say this in the back of your mind. You're gonna say he doesn't know him, so how can he say this? Mm -hmm. I know men, and I have. You're not the, you're not the first time that I saw, I've seen this question. I have friends that have talked to me about this, and it ended up being that they yeah. just didn't find out until two months later. And it could be as simple as one, I think you should appreciate that. I know it's hard to see it at this is he didn't cheat on you. It doesn't seem like he cheated on you. And so instead of even if he had feelings for somebody else or was attracted to somebody else, he ended it mm -hmm. with you before doing that because he possibly. respected you enough yeah. for that. Possibly. Yes. Possibly. And the reason why he's probably saying, give me some time to think about it is because he's probably dealing in his head is. Am I going to pursue this other person and what's going to come out of it? So not only does it cast you kind of as a safety net just in case it doesn't work out, but it also gives you t like a definite timetable. So mm -hmm. in a month, he's thinking uh, you're he's thinking that's going to be enough time to get over him where yes. you'll come back in the month. You'll come back in the month <sighs> saying, 
hey, how are you? How's it been? And he, in his yeah. mind, is going to be like, I thought she'd be over it at this point because it's been a month. Now I have to be an asshole about it or whatever. You know what I mean? No, see, like, he, he, I think it, what it sounds like to me, like, she even so she even said it just now. So, like, she said, uh, of course, I treated him like a king. And she said that, and I don't even know them. But what did I say? She treated him awesome, didn't I? I just mm -hmm. fucking said that because I can tell by the way he went about it, right? So, uh, there's absolutely somebody else. But, like, this would end up being one of those, Trish, where, like, the man... He, he leaves her, tries to sever this without breaking her heart and like prays that he does a good job with it. Starts this other relationship, but then checks on her, makes sure she's okay too. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen that numerous times because like we, ca he cares about you. He does. Yeah, he does, honey. He does, honey. He cares about you, but not enough to stay with you. There's somebody else. Yeah. That's, that sucks. That sucks. I, I feel bad for you because. You know, you sound like a good girl, and but that's just the way it happens, man. Like every everybody, I get that question a lot. Like I treat him, I treat him, I like to treat him like a king, and I treat him with all this. I do everything he asks me to do. I keep the house clean. I keep uh, I keep food on the table. Sometimes that's not enough, man. I'll say I'll say I'll say something else to Honey because I I I'm, uh, she's I'm assuming she, she's in your chat, right? This isn't a yeah yeah. So Honey, I'll tell you this: whatever relationship you guys had before is gone. It is gone. Mm because it's already tainted now somebody is left you don't want that relationship anymore anyways mm. because somebody is left so this month that he gave you for saying you know give me a month space don't give him the month you go live your life you mm. go meet people you surround yourself with friends you get out of your home do whatever mm. you need to do to keep your mind busy okay let's just say in a month he does come back this is not hope. I'm not giving you hope. I'm giving you a scenario. Let's just say in a month he does come back. Then you can choose at that sense. Do I want to start a new relationship with him? Because the old one is gone. It's completely mm -hmm. gone. Or if you give yourself that month to truly do and work on yourself and get out and do things that you like, you will be better affirmed to know, am I staying with this because I'm content? Or do I want to try out a new relationship with this person because I truly do love them? Mm -hmm. Give yourself that month to truly decide what you want. Chances are it's, he's probably not coming back. So yeah, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't. It, it's been 10 months. It's been 10 she months. Says, he didn't come back. He didn't. He didn't. So mm -hmm. but again, she, she said that he thought about it for a month prior to that. And that's that's what he's telling you. Yeah, that's what he taught. That's what he's telling you. It's an easy way to let you guys down or let let you guys go. It is. Yeah, it, it's just the way it's like I've, I've had to do that, too. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks. And I and I've taken the path of like I've had to gaslight my way out of a relationship. Like I I blew up a thing that they did, turned it around on them and then made it look like their fault. And I was young. Yeah. And I and I can recognize that like but man, I just did not want to break her heart, man. Like she was so good to me. It's like fuck, man. Then you feel even worse because I don't want to cheat on her. That'd be even worse. Yeah. But I, I, I want to go pursue this other thing. You know, it's just like, like I, I, I coach football, guys. I don't, I don't know if you guys know. And I used to get like upset kids all the time. Kids are like, coach, why don't you play me? And like, I give you everything that I got. I go so hard. Like I give 110. percent I'm on time to everything. I don't fail any of my classes. Son, sometimes effort is not enough for you to be good at this. So like, sometimes, I like that. sometimes like what you guys are doing and sometimes you're just in a relationship with the guy that's not for you. And no matter what you do for them, it's not going to be good enough to retain them. So my thing is, that's why that I keep telling everybody. Probably one of yes. the best things I ever heard you say. Yeah. And my thing is, is that's why you guys got to find out right now if he's the best one for you. That's why I say, hey, wear your emotions on a sleeve. You tell him you empty out your fucking Pandora's box, because if that shit don't scare him away, then that's the guy for you. Mm -hmm. Because if you if you do it now or you do it later, he's going to fucking leave. Right. Like if, 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 if whatever you tell him shocks him to death, he's going to leave anyways. And if you just withhold information, you you share it, you act a certain way later on down the road, he's gonna fucking leave then too. You just wasted ten months of your time. That makes me feel bad for her. Cause she probably was hoping that he would come back and he didn't, you know? 
That makes me feel really bad. Uh, um, so did you want to read J-Dub's uh, message? I know you said you were going to get to that. Do you... uh, I, don't, I don't know if he wants me to read it. So I told him that I would get to it. And if it's something, I'm going to talk to him. If he wants me to like disclose that on the next stream, I will do that. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. So um, there was an, yeah. there was another way that I wanted to to inform people about cheating. This isn't this one's actually a little ju juicy. How I found that out. Okay, so at this point, I was already separated from my ex husband, and I did we didn't know if we were gonna gonna make it work. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, but we were working on the marriage, and we both had decided we were not gonna see anybody else. That gut in my in my pit of my stomach told yeah. me that something mm -hmm. was up. You know, right. so. He had changed all his passwords at this point. Like I couldn't get into anything, anything whatsoever. So <laughs> this is going to make me sound so sociopathic. Um, I got his Apple watch and I just went to his emails and did forgot passwords that way to all like I just put in every single oh, email, shit. every single email that he had associated with him that I mm. knew about. And I just put forgot password, forgot password until they hit. And yeah, then yeah. I logged into these dating apps that he was on and I mm. just saw every single message mm. that he ever sent. You. But hold on. I ain't mad at you. Hold on. I'll tell you this. Oh, it grosses me out just thinking about it. You talked about fishing, right? This man, in a span of two hours that he was on this dating app, I'm just going to say it was two hours. It was probably a day. He sent the same exact message. Hi, you're so beautiful. I would mm. love to get to know you to i'm not shitting you like mm. 80 to 100 women <laughs> the same exact message how many bites did he get he did get bites he did get that's, bites that's how it works and i that's looked i looked because me like i'm 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 being vain and i'm looking at all the profiles of this woman it wasn't mm -hmm. like it, it, it's not it wasn't like what we put in our mind where we're like He's going to leave me for this, you know, hot girl that's young and, and, you know, flat stomach and big boobs. No, he was he was sending it to anybody and everybody just to get a bite. That's it. Mm -hmm. And and that's why when you said fishing, ugh, it hit me in my heart because that's exactly with you. it's exactly what he was doing. He was fishing. We're yeah. gonna fish, man. So like, you got to be careful. That's why you gotta like. <laughs> that's why you gotta be you. You gotta ask the questions that you guys know how to ask. You gotta fucking conduct yourself like, like Trish does. Something comes up fishy, then something must be fucking fishy, right? I mean, if you smell shit, there must be shit around <laughs> here or somewhere. Like, do not ignore it. Do not ignore it, cause the shit ain't gonna clean itself up, man. So I, I'm gl I'm glad for you, and I'm sorry that you had, but. I'm better for it now, though, because right, I, right, right, I, I right. was already in a relationship that was already ending. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. When I look back at it now, it was already ending. Um, yes, it sucks that it happened, but it happened. And it just makes me understand more in my, you know, relationships going forward. You cannot predict what's going to happen. You mm -hmm. cannot you cannot protect yourself to never get cheated on. Because it's gonna, if it happens, it happens. Like you cannot mm -hmm. date somebody going, he doesn't look like a cheater. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. Um, Bearded has actually sent this message a few times, so I wanna read it. He said, going to say it again, not just that, but, and not speaking from experience, he doesn't cheat. Men cheat with their dicks and women cheat with their hearts because it takes much more for a woman to do something. I wouldn't, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't agree with that. I think we all cheat for the same reasons. I, I when you cut it down to it, yes. Mm. Yeah, but the ones, the things that we pursue, I think this is kind of what he means. The things that we pursue, like uh, your husband fishing for eighty girls, any one of them that shows him the attention or the affection that maybe he's missing in his relationship with you would have sufficed. So thinking what is. Yeah. Right there. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. In terms of what Bearded is saying, but the the reason for him even doing it stems from love language not getting met, being unhappy in a marriage, uh, yeah. not communicating these problems. But now, women, they're not. They're yes, they're not gonna fucking copy paste eighty messages. 
to 80 guys. They're not, not gonna the do that. Not the same exact thing. And you yeah, know, you know so what sucks it, is us women were so conditioned <laughs> that when we see a man messaging us saying, You're so beautiful, we're like, oh my God, oh my God, he thinks I'm beautiful. <laughs> He literally just sent that message to 50 other women. Yes. Like, are you oh, kidding me? He God. literally just, that's, and that's why, sorry, I had to take my head down, hair down because I had a headache. But that's oh like, God. that's, it just makes me think like when men say like that stuff on dating apps, it, it's like, a, yeah. it's the it's same hard, shit. It's hard to, yeah, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to believe him, right? It feels yeah. like you're trying to figure out if he's being genuine or not. That's what makes dating nowadays so hard. Uh, but, you, you got to attack dating in a way of like you not playing games. If you're playing games like, oh, I'm not going to text him for three days. I'm not going to call him immediately. Yeah. Like when you play games like that, like you keep everything in murky waters and he's playing too. Like this, he's like, oh, I'm not hearing from her at all. He's doing whatever the fuck he wants to do. And it's the same way the other way around too. So like you just mm -hmm. got to like do what you want to do and take the guy that accepts you for that. That's it, man. That's how you're going to decipher, man, whether the the person you're trying to date is being genuine or not, period. And, and I, you know, we can teach you all these little things of how you can see if somebody is cheating. But ultimately, like, I remember sometime, that one time this thing came up on my For You page where it was like, if your man if your man's not texting you, a way to check to see is if, if his snap score goes up. And I was like, what? I didn't even know there was a Snapchat score, okay? So you can go mm. to somebody's pro profile on Snapchat and you can click on their icon and you can see that the Snapchat count is going up. So if they're not texting you, but their Snapchat is going up, you know they're texting somebody. And I'm and I'm seeing this on my For You page and I was like, w w women will find anything out. Like, yeah, that's good. That's they a good will find anything that. out. And I had oh. no idea, no yeah. idea that that was a thing. But... We, we can tell you all of these things, but ultimately, if you if you just something like how said, if something stand your ground. you stand your ground and if something just is a miss, not normal and they're, they come in and they're too nice or they're starting a fight out of nowhere, just pay attention to those things. Mm -hmm. So same thing happened to me, like in my marriage, I just started sensing like. Misery loves company. Every time I come home, there's a problem. You got nothing to be complaining about. Remember what I said about like uh, nothing, nothing good is going on after 12. So I'd be going to bed like 10 o'clock because I got to work at 6 a.m. in the morning. And then she doesn't get to bed till 4 a.m. I'm like, listen, she don't like TV that much. That doesn't seem right to me. So we're going to bed 4 a.m. all the time. What she was doing during this time, this was the time that they were talking to each other, messaging each other, whether it's phone, Snapchat, or like in some kind of chat room somewhere where I'm sound asleep, yeah. minding my business. But like I started noticing like uh, the interactions were different. We were like, our marriage started becoming like uh, two ships sailing by each other in the middle of the night. Just not even aware of each other, not even making a fucking and like Oof. all that stuff. So I fucking knew. I didn't go through phones. I didn't need to do that. I mean, you know how I caught her? I fucking I was out of town and I told I was like seeing my mom or something like that. And I told her, I said, you know what? I'm coming home Sunday, but I'm gonna tell her I'm not coming home till Wednesday. So I'm like, hey, I'm a, I'm gonna stay here with my mom's till Wednesday. I'll, I'll see you when I see you. Type yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. I show up on fucking Sunday. Oof. I pull in, fucking, I, I shut the car off, put it in neutral, and I rolled into the fucking driveway. That's how fucking... You I sure, knew, you knew. I knew I was going to catch her. I fucking knew I was going to catch her. I sneak into the house. I, I got I got windbreakers on. I'm like, so, I'm so, I spy with it. I take the windbreakers off. I break into my own house in my boxers. And I keep I keep the socks on. So that my feet don't make a noise on the wood floors. You get what I'm saying? So I hear I'm you. sliding. I get to the hallway. She's laughing it up, having a good old time in her office. I'm like, the fuck is going on in here? Like normal situation would have walked right into there. No, no beat. I just sat there for like 30 minutes. She's Skyping the guy. Skyping. Man, as soon as I heard her say something like, uh, uh, I forgot what specifically she said. Oh, he was getting in the shower or some shit like that. And she said, uh, oh, let me get a picture. I fucking, I busted that fucking door in. And get this, he he's on the laptop. He he runs like a little coward. He runs right to the laptop. I, I, I just fucking just look at the fucking laptop like this. And, and remember, I'm, I'm naked. 
<laughs> I'm pretty much naked. I got my boxes on. He's like, what the fuck is this kid doing? I'm just staring at him. He runs to the fucking laptop, turns it off, leaves her hanging with me by herself. Like, you want to talk about a coward. Wow. That's a fucking coward right there. Leaves her wow. by herself because I catch him. Now, obviously, I didn't fucking do shit. I, first thing I did, I took the phone. I took her computer. I got all my evidence that I needed. I screenshotted everything. In the midst of me grabbing the information I knew, she gets in her car and she leaves. Right? She's already caught. Because I had a prenuptial agreement. I already knew what my what yeah. I was going to do when I got there. Right? So I got all that shit. And that was wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. I was divorced two days later, signed and delivered. Wow. And she was, she was out on the streets. I, our prenup, I, rem I don't know if you guys... I think I told you this. Our prenup was simple. This is something I learned from my mom. You told you me this. You get married to somebody, this is the prenuptial agreement that you make. If one person or the other gets caught cheating, they give up everything. That was my prenuptial agreement. And I remember her dad saying, like, oh, he just wants to take everything from you. And I was like, are you an idiot? You really just said that to me? If I cheat on your daughter, she gets everything. If she cheats on me, I get everything. That sounds like an equal agreement there, don't you think, yes, mister? It does. It's almost like he knew. He knew that he she knew. was a piece of yeah. shit. Right? It, that's, it, 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 he just knew. And it, like, I was like, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It's like, what do you mean? She get, like, I get everything from her. Like, you, you know she's going to cheat on me? Is that what you're saying? So anyways, that was the equal binding agreement. So it was like, well, no, you, you will still get everything. No, if you do a regular divorce, that still has nothing to do with that prenup because cheating was not instituted. So in a regular divorce, now it's 50-50. Yeah. If somebody just wants to leave the marriage because they want to leave the marriage, you still undergo the same laws. But in this prenup, cheating only. She lost everything. She, I, wow. I told her, you, you can take, you can fill your car up, but you got to go today. And that's exactly what happened. If I ever get married again, that is exactly what you my prenup to. agreement is going to be. You have to do it. My parents did it and I did it too. Because you're not asking for anything more than no. don't cheat on me. You don't know what cheat. I mean? If you want a divorce, get a divorce. Yeah. Just but if don't you cheat, cheat on me, yeah. that's it. It's your ass. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Wow. I, you, I took all the bank accounts and everything. Everything. You never told me that story about, about catching her that way. Yeah. But, but why did I catch her? Because I suspected something. Mm -hmm. Something was off in behavior. And What was listen, it? What was it? It was all those things that we we're talking about. She, uh, the misery loves company. She'd start fights with me randomly. Uh, she was up till four o'clock in the morning for no fucking reason while I'm sound asleep. Right? She's sleeping until fucking noon the next day, and like it was just weird. But she didn't do that shit. I'm like, what is going on here? Nothing good is going on past midnight. And then we would just like ignore each other. Interactions, the talking. There was okay. nothing going on. So like, it was easy. Um. Did you know the person that she was cheating on with? No. You had no idea who that was? No, never met him. He was in another state. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Another state. So again. So she I mean, gave up her whole life for somebody in another state. She wasn't going to leave him. Wow. No, she wasn't going to leave me. Yeah. She wasn't going to. She was literally going to partake in this. So she said something about the plan was to stop cheating. Like a, like they were going to be done with doing that because there was no way to like, she didn't want to risk all this stuff, that spiraling staircase. Yeah. She felt so trapped in it that she was just going to give that up. Thank God. Thank God that I fucking had the sense before that because I would have been how much longer would I wasted? How yeah. many more years would I've wasted? You know, so that's wild. Uh, do you still talk to her at all, or have inter any interactions with her? No, that's funny. That's funny that you fucking said that because she she fucking reached out to me like two weeks ago. I just saw the message because I don't I don't go to IG. I just saw it today, and the first thing that I did, okay, the first thing I fucking did, she sent me a message on IG. The first thing I did, screenshot, sent it to Jenna. First thing I did. What did I'm she not say? doing anything wrong. Nothing. She laughed about it, said she's fucking crazy. <laughs> no, no. What it. was the message? Was she oh, like, hi, how are you? Yeah. Being hunky dory, trying to like, I know how she thinks. Being hunky dory, trying to get some kind of dialogue with me. That shit don't work on me. I don't talk to women. 
Yeah. I don't. I yeah. don't talk to fucking. I don't engage. I don't do none of that stuff because. I'm exclusive to my wife. Yeah. I don't fucking engage in that shit. So she got a screenshot of that and then she got that immediately. I think I mean, that's it. I think that's what I, somebody had commented on one of your videos. It was a it was a, a girl and she was like, I just love the sound of your voice. And I just responded with laughing emojis because I was like, mm. you ain't getting nowhere, honey. Yeah, like, I don't know what you're thinking. Yeah. Like, that stuff, that stuff like, doesn't work. And, on me, yeah. and I know that part of that has to do with your face, too. But also just I, you're just a man filled with integrity and loyalty. You you can just you that. can you can see that just by knowing you. And, and mm -hmm. yeah, it's just yeah, I. I aspire to like, uh, that's one of the things that I like about like what we're doing here is I feel like you are teaching these women the right There's way to think about, there. yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And the right way to think about your relationship, maybe look at yourself, also catch your potential problem that's coming up, but also that there are good guys out there. Yeah. There really is. And you you're not going to know that by putting all your eggs into one basket though right like yeah. so take advantage of like dating seeing if you can stand this guy if like you like this guy you guys get caught too much into that mon monogamous relationship shit when you're not married to the guy and we 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 respect your commitment but man they're doing it like you better fucking do it too yeah like you really should um so. yeah and we've we've had talks about that too i still have issues with that because i do put <laughs> yeah. all my eggs in one basket but it's because i i think it's just the way i was raised it's a good quality but it's to the women's their your own fault it's very sometime. it's very undervalued yeah. it's very very yeah. undervalued um it is well it was another great episode i had a good time we had some good yeah, conversation points i had some good questions um I'll, I'll end it with this one question it looks like adriana has been waiting for a little bit for this one um where is my mouse there it is um how long is too long to wait to be in a relationship with somebody who is trying to strengthen their sobriety how long is too long to stay in a relationship to be in a relationship with someone who's trying to strengthen their sobriety. So, Adriana, I don't know if you're still here. Are yeah, you I, are you asking like if it's okay to leave? Right. Or are you asking, are you saying you're not in a relationship but you're supporting him so that you can be in a relationship? I need a little bit of clarification on that. Or she feels stuck in the relationship because yeah. uh the sobriety counts on her being there. And maybe she doesn't want to be there. So how long is too long? Yeah. So Adriana, it, we just read your question in chat. I don't know if you if you're still in chat. We just wanted to know clarification um, about those those things so we can answer yeah. correctly. So if, if I got that right, I would say this: if you're a big part of them making themselves better, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're unhappy in the relationship, that's not going to change. Okay. Now, they're, no, they're not in a relationship. But I've been supporting him the whole time. And he's not progressing, meaning he's not taking the steps that he needs to be taking for self-improvement. If that is feeling like the situation and you and he's, I guess, relying on you or using that against you to keep you around, then I think it's okay to get out of it. Because you've got to show progress. You've got to show progress towards your goal. If not, then he's just keeping you at a standstill with him. Agreed. Agreed. misery loves company do not you might be hey if you leave you might be doing him help you might be helping him because maybe he's got to go get it done now um i will end this little thing between this little thing the the podcast with letting you know that i just hit a hundred thousand followers on tiktok well, yeah i'm not surprised <laughs> i'm not surprised my tiktok never hit the algorithm so um, Motherfucker. We'll we'll talk Fucking. about strategy on that one. But yeah, um I, I've been on TikTok for, you know, it just that's just wild to me. Hit a hundred hundred grand, so that's pretty awesome. Well maybe if we start start up next time my chat doesn't die, maybe I'll hit the algo too. Oh my gosh, whatever. Oh Jesus right. and then Christ. Richard just gifted ten. Thank you so much, Richard, for the gifted ten. You're awesome. Congrats yeah. from people in the chat over here as well. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate Free it. For you guys that left questions in the chat, please message me those directly. Yes. So that I can review them and then possibly bring them to the next podcast. So, uh, like, please message me your questions and then I will 
I will look at them, I promise. And then same with me also. Go ahead and um, message me if you have any questions, and then we will go ahead and um, get those answered on the next podcast. Um, if you're not following House of G, he is tagged in every video that I've posted in the past week. So make sure you go give him a follow. Um, he is a dear friend of mine. I enjoy doing these things with him, and he's a highly intellectual person, and let's just show him the love. Appreciate you guys. That was fun. That was a good one. Good one for sure. I appreciate you and I'll talk to you soon. All right. See you guys. Peace.